James Webb made the first ever observation of Mars. What have we discovered? The best telescope ever made by humans was used to observe Mars a few days ago. This telescope was created and designed to collect light from the universe's most distant objects, search for signs of life in the atmospheres of planets around other stars, and provide us with a new, in-depth perspective of the cosmos. What a waste of time and resources. I mean, why do we need JWST to observe Mars when there are already probes orbiting the planet and robots traversing its surface? Well, science still requires originality and critical thought. In this video, I'll show you how the JWST discovered Mars being observed in infrared light. The story begins on September 19, 2022, and it is set in the fictitious Palacio de Congresos de Granada in Spain. There, from September 18th to September 23rd, was held the Europlanet Science Congress 2022. The purpose of the gathering was to give the global planetary science community a venue for networking, results exchange, and presentations. A dynamic environment was meant to be created for the astrophysics community to gather over the course of six days of posters, seminars, and speeches. The first photos and spectra of Mars were made public by the James Webb Space Telescope delegation on the second day. JWST was in the position to take the pictures and measurements on September 5, 2022, from a million kilometers or so away from Mars. The area of Mars that faces the telescope and is lighted by the sun is what the JWST sees from this unique vantage point. Hence, it can gather pictures and spectra with the spectral resolution required to study fleeting phenomena like dust storms, meteorological events, and seasonal changes. It can also identify processes that take place at several times throughout a Martian day in a single observation. Using Webb's near-infrared camera, the telescope surveyed this side of the planet and acquired photographs in IR cam. In theory, these spectra and photos might offer planetary scientists a distinctive perspective on Earth's nearest neighbor, providing information that can be used in conjunction with observations made by rovers like NASA's Perseverance and spacecraft in the Martian orbit. Today, rovers on Mars' surface, telescopes on Earth, and the Hubble Space Telescope have all captured classic images of the red planet. But a certain level of curiosity is always piqued by each fresh sight of the Martian surface. Especially if it is captured on camera by the phantasmagoric JWST, the newest cool kid in astronomy who uses his enormous infrared eye to survey both the distant universe and our own galaxy. In reality, JWST has some difficulty imaging objects that are near to home. Remember that this is the most powerful telescope ever put into orbit and was built to be sensitive enough to see the incredibly faint light coming from the universe's furthest objects. In contrast to them, Mars is a boiler of fire. As a result, astronomers and engineers had to devise a strategy to avoid oversaturating the observations. When your telescope gathers too much light and is unable to store it, the phenomenon of saturation happens. We can also experience saturation issues when taking selfies. If we don't position ourselves correctly, the sun's light will oversaturate the image. Since it reflects the sunlight from the sun, Mars is quite brilliant. The scientists taking the observations and analyzing the data had to use ways to make up for the oversaturation that would typically come from Mars' brightness. The data analysis was modified as a result of the extremely brief exposure times. The outcome was this, many elements are admirable in this breathtaking picture. The characteristics visible to JWST are depicted on a model of Mars to the left. At the top right, an image taken at a wavelength of 2.1 microns reveals surface features like craters and dust. The 4.3 micron image's bottom right corner displays a heat map of the Martian atmosphere that has been warmed by the sun. Various hues represent various surface temperatures. As you can see, thermal radiation from the Martian atmosphere dominates the image at 4.3 microns, shining brightest where the sun is practically directly above of the planet. 
The atmosphere of a planet is typically hottest here. There are other things that can emit infrared light at this wavelength besides heat. Toward the bottom right of the brightest spot in this wavelength, there is a dark smear that is actually caused by a feature on Mars' surface. One of the biggest craters in the solar system and on Mars, it is a massive impact basin known as Hellas Planitia. We know that this basin is approximately 7,152 kilometers deep and spans a distance of 2,300 kilometers from east to west. It is found in the southern hemisphere and was created at the beginning of Mars life between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago during the period of strong late bombardment. The entire structure has deteriorated over time, leaving behind several small craters that were filled with lava flows and molded by atmospheric factors. The mountain range created by the collision is still visible along its northern edge, but large portions of its northeastern and southwestern edges are lost. Topographic map of the basin remember to always view things in a larger context. For instance, it's possible that the atmosphere of Mars is changing, and numerous observations over the course of, say, 10 years, one observation every year, could provide us with a variety of insights on how it is evolving. In 10 years, we may have images of a particular region of Mars taken during a storm and another image taken of the same place when Mars is calm and without a storm. We would gain invaluable knowledge on the climate of the red planet in this way. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future uploads. James Webb, as we've already mentioned, also captured spectra of the atmosphere of the red planet. And this is possibly the most intriguing element since carefully examining Mars' atmosphere could teach us more about exoplanets farther away, where additional life forms might be lurking. And we're eager to locate them. We evaluated Mars' atmosphere's chemical composition. James Webb, for instance, discovered CO2 traces. This is nothing particularly noteworthy. After all, we already know a lot about the atmosphere of the red planet, but Webb also discovered signs of the gas argon and, last but not least, water, in the form of water vapor, the same substance that makes up clouds on Earth. This is it. The near-infrared spectrograph obtained the first near-infrared spectra of Mars for Webb, NIR spec. The spectrum displays the subtle variations in brightness between hundreds of different wavelengths that are representative of the planet as a whole, as opposed to the Mars images, which show differences in brightness integrated over a large number of wavelengths from location to location across the planet at a specific day and time. We learn about the planet's atmosphere from the so-called absorption lines. As you can see, carbon dioxide, water, and carbon monoxide all exhibit a significant absorption line. The fact that web spectrum can be used to calibrate the telescope and lower mistakes makes it highly important. In fact, we already know the amount of carbon dioxide or the proportion of water in Mars' atmosphere because these measurements were made independently by different sensors and probes. We can calibrate our inaccuracies in this way, for example, when it comes to exoplanets. Assume we have proof that there is liquid water on Mars. According to the James Webb Telescope, if we ever discovered an exoplanet with the same water absorption lines as Mars, we might be 99% certain that exoplanet likewise contains liquid water, even if we would never be able to physically land on that planet to verify it. Or perhaps there are methane and cyanide traces in Mars' atmosphere itself. They are highly intriguing molecules since they might have something to do with the volcanic and geological activity or even the possibility of life on the red planet. Although it appears that some probes found minute amounts of methane on Mars, researchers were never able to observe them again. Perhaps their discovery in the JWST spectra will help us understand life as we know it on a deeper level. The team will focus on spectrum research over the next few weeks as they work with the Space Telescope Science Institute team to calibrate the data and fully grasp their potential. They will gather in a zone between 3.5 and 3.7 microns, where we will try to detect the existence of organic compounds or set strict upper bounds on their concentration. 
They will aim to find methane, the existence of which has been hotly contested in the scientific community, and investigate and map the hydrochloric acid, which was recently found in the Martian atmosphere by the spectrometers aboard the ExoMars mission. Nonetheless, Webb has already used other spectrums. It previously astounded us with the WASP-96b spectrum a few weeks ago. This spectrum spans a surprisingly wide range of wavelengths, including visible red light and a region of the spectrum that has not previously been accessible from other telescopes, for example, a region of the spectrum that is particularly sensitive to water as well as other important molecules like oxygen, methane, and carbon dioxide which are not immediately apparent in the WASP-96b spectrum but should be detectable in other exoplanets planned for observation. These findings could be used by scientists to determine how thick the planet's atmosphere is as well as how, when, and where it developed. Welcome to the James Webb Space Telescope era, a new age. Alright everyone here's where the video ends, thank you for viewing. Be sure to like the video and enable notifications. See you again soon.